Well guys, I'll just give a little bit of an intro before we get going. Um, welcome to TPC Toronto. Um, we're going to get golf balls for like four hours today. Right? Usually that scares people, but that's why I have chairs. Right? So you guys can take a break and chill out. You don't have to hit balls for the entire four hours. I'm going to come by. We're going to chat about something. Probably the biggest, most like, oh my God, I need to change all this. Like in the first session. And then when I kind of leave you off to practice and come back, I make it a little easier, make it a little bit easier. So by the end of the day, you're probably going to have two or three words that are going to get the job done. And we're going to hopefully get into somewhat of a rhythm or a tempo. And then from there, you guys have something to practice. Um, so like I said, the first thing I come by and talk about, we're going to look at some video. It's going to be big. It's going to be a lot of stuff. Might be overwhelming. But the next time I come around, won't be like that. I'm going to take what we talked about and just make it easier on you. Kind of focus on your priorities. Uh, I want you to hit driver sometime in the next hour, an hour and a half. I don't want to wait for driver till the end because you'll be exhausted. Uh, hour number three, I'm going to come by and we're going to work the same stuff with your wedges. So we'll hit some short shots, doing all the same things. And then the last hour is me coming by to confirm that you know what you've got kind of makes sense, that it clicks, and again, you understand your priorities. So we've got lots of balls. If you need a drink, there's stuff in the cooler. Um, let's get to it. Cool. Where you normally play? Where? Yeah. Pheasant Run. Okay. And yesterday, actually. Okay. How was your game? Um, you know, the greens were really tough. Yeah. And the wind was tough, so uh, my leg was a little bit for a no. Okay. But hitting ball, uh, similar to today, my miss was like over, over slice or over cut or whatever. Okay. Um, <coughs> and the spinning quite a bit. Okay. So, um, that would be just like my miss hit if I were to. Okay. Um, my driver was moving. I was like, getting in a place, not going as far as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I was okay. But, okay. Uh, my short game was not amazing. Okay. Um, but so. Like ball striking, I would just like to get more consistent and like, find the center of the club. Okay. Um, okay. Let me take a look. I don't know. It's kind of a mixed bag. If something's working, something, something's generally not. So. All right. All right, so we're talking about your grip today. So put the club straight up like this in front of you. Okay, keep going up. All right, so you've got this club too much in the palm of your hand here. Okay. So if I were to hold the club like this, take this hand off, can you make sure that your fingers go on the club at 90 degrees like that, right? And in the fingers, okay? And so the thumb will wrap over top. All right, so technically in golf, they would call this a strong grip, mm -hmm. but we've got a weak grip, which is garbage. We've got a neutral grip, which is garbage. And then we have a strong grip that works. So the only time that you're going to see a weak grip on tour is a guy like Bryson DeChambeau. Mm -hmm. But his grips are this big, yeah. and there's no way to actually get it in the right spot. He does that for a reason. But like Dustin and like all the better players have a grip with a ton of angle right here in their wrist. So by getting it in the fingers, we're going to get rid of that wear mark on your gloves. right? And it wraps over top. Thumb hangs down. Okay, now put the other hand on. Good. So now we've got the thumb sitting right in the lifeline of your other hand. Mm -hmm. And I'll put that, that hands on there fine. Okay. So from here, just make a back swing for me. Take it up to the top. Okay. And you want to feel as though that with this new grip that we can get more wrist action to everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start again. Good. Uh, well, first of all, where's your ball position? Uh, what do you mean? Like relative to your feet. Oh, it's kind of center, I think. Kind of center. Okay. So, there's center. And what club is this? Seven. Seven? Okay. So, we probably want to play it just in front of center. All right. Right there. Should I be like squaring up to the ball? Yeah, you can move forward if you want to. Okay. So, take it back for me. Stop out halfway back. Yeah, loosen up. More down. Fingers more on top. There we go. Okay. 
Back down. Okay, hit one for me. Twisted? Yeah. So now use your shoulders like this to make it straight. Yep. Twist your shoulders to square the face. Awesome. Okay. One more time. One more. Totally. Yep. One more time. There you go. Okay. Now, if you get, if you start with that wrist bent the right way, you won't need to feel like you do it in the backswing. I'm just trying. I'm trying to burn the candle from both ends right now. There you go. Good. Okay, so go ahead and hit the shot, hold your finish. Okay. Another one. Good, okay, show me the back swing. So if the ball starts left and curves left, it's too far back in your stance. Too far back. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, it's a little far forward, but give me that one. Let's see if we can change our ball flight. Good job. Come take a look. So. When we want to try and power this club through and release the club, the release happens because we stop doing something. The release isn't something like a punch where we have to be active through the shot. It's like release, let go. And the let go is arm speed. So when you're swinging through, at times you're kind of bring, you're using your arms to power your club all the way past the ball. And that's why we get this straight look at the end of your swing. Yeah. So, that is common. I want it to feel today that once the grip's on in a good spot, you've taken it back and feeling like you open the face just a little bit, cup the wrist just a little bit, okay? As you go through, I want you to feel like you're letting the arm slow down to let the club head pass the handle, okay? Some people call it a flip, but you'd be the opposite of that. You'd be a hold on too long kind of guy, all right? So we're going to get the grip on in the right spot and try to feel through the ball, you're letting the club head pass the hands and almost pointing the shaft low at the target. Yeah. So from here as it goes up, we get our re-hinge, right? So it's like we start here in the swing, it goes up to create leverage in the backswing, it slams down really hard into the ground, and then because of all that speed, it comes back up again, all right? Just kind of the info on the wrist, but not a to-do list. Your to-do list is your grip and trying to feel as though that through the ball, you can get your thumbs pointed at the target better and allowing the arms to slow down so that the club head can catch up to the grip. So in the swing to create speed, we have a lot of accelerators, but we have decelerators. And the decelerators is like if I sat on the hood of your car going down the highway, I feel 100. How do you make me go 200? Stop. Hit the brake yeah. and I go flying. Brakes in the arms. So trying to feel like you can make this grip action better, that's going to allow the club head to kick out relative to your breaking arms. So here's me stopping my arms the hardest. I didn't, I didn't do this with my wrists. I stopped my arms and my wrist did that, yeah. right? Release, right? We're not trying to create an action through this. We're trying to create a break through this. So grip, a little bit of cupping on the backswing, and then from there, trying to feel like you can get into your really good finish with the club almost coming here, closer to you. Okay, see a couple.
So every ball that fades, more, okay? And when you do it too much, you'll start hitting draws. So what was that there, or was that? You finished, like you came through your swing this way, yeah. and the arm was high and the club was high. If my arm is down and the club's up, I have this thing re-hinge up again. So one more time, set up your shot. Okay, good. So if I put this here, I don't want your arms to speed up into this club. We're gonna slow them down before that, but let the club head go. Let it pass everything. There. Nice strike, by the way. Don't let go. It's going to feel like you get this way, mm -hmm. right? Because this stops and the wrist goes. So soften up your wrist. Allow your wrist to be hingy and loose and un unsqueezed. Oh. One more. I'll get out of the way so you don't feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I gotta get comfortable with it. See a couple good results to buy in. Good. So the lowest arm finish. Shortest follow through with your arms. So that was pretty good through here, but in the follow through, you pulled your arms to the left, which is gonna make it cut across the ball, right? That speeds up the grip. So one more time, make a practice one for me. Well, I'm going to give you a different idea. So set up to it. So how do you make a swing on the follow through without hitting me? So take it back okay, and go through slow. Yeah. How about out there? Okay, one more time. Yeah, there you go. So you would have decapitated me. <laughs> So one more time, set up to it. Okay, hit a shot where your arms or club don't hit that. Good. Yep. Nice shot. So the follow through and the ideas on the follow through, I don't really want to give you a different place to put your arms and put the club. I just want you to stop it way shorter than where you were going before. Yeah. But when you power your arms and hands, which are holding the grip, to, to take this thing out, that you're overlagging the club face. This starts to pull around. The club face never has a chance to catch up to the grip. So, you know, the flip is your friend today. So does every other golfer, but like, like Phil Mickelson and VJ let go of the golf club, they flip it so hard. So they just do it at a better time than most. Okay, so comfortable with the grip and do everything you can not to hit that stick and avoid that stick. Whether it's feeling like you go this way and you keep it away from the stick or you just stop short one of the two. So, we talked about it before, why does it fade? Uh, because I'm finishing too much. Yep, so when the club comes down this way, by pulling on this grip this way for too far, it keeps the club face open, right? And when we stop the arms, that's what lets the club head catch up to the handle, even if not pass it. Yeah. I'm stopping the arms, I guess. 
Yeah, I think that it either needs to be right now consciously letting it go, or you're doing something to like lock up your wrist joints. stand here and I don't want your arms to get to this. All right. Really feel like they stay. Not bad, another one. Hold your finish on the next one. What gets the club here is the fact that your belly button's facing the target. Mm -hmm. If your belly button faces over there, it's slowed down to allow your club to pass this. So, yeah. set up to your ball. <laughs> Alright, so, oh yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. That looks way, whoa, that is so good. Well done. Okay, so here's your belly button. Take it to the top. Okay, keep turning more. All right, so your club is on the left side of this. Yeah. All right, now all I want you to do, I want you to leave this where it is, turn this stick with your belly button forward. Okay, good. All right, perfect, look at the ball. Notice how we hit the ball off our left side. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then from there, as you keep turning, that's when the arms catch up, there, and they end up in front of you. Yeah. But if you're going from here, and you're, letting, you're pushing the arms up and around, this has to freeze and stop. Mm -hmm. So I still, like, I don't mind how your finish looks, it's just how it gets there leads to the fade. Okay, so here's another little exercise. Take this for me. And I'm gonna get one too. So, I want you to feel like you can take this thing up and I want, I want you to whip it. Okay, good. What's the loudest whipping sound you can create? All right. Okay, notice how short you're doing that. Right, it's not going through very far. But if you take the handle of this and you pull it all the way to here, see how long and oops, how long and like soft the sound is. So, three places where long drive guys break their club. Three places. The first place is in their follow through. They'll bang the club off their back and it'll break. That's not you. The second place is that when they come down like this and they slow their arms down, the shaft goes like that, as you can see happening here. Snap. And then the other place is that if they do that really hard, they break it in their grip by slowing things down to let the club catch up. So another way to do this, if I gave you a whip to put in your glove hand, how would you whip the ball to hit the golf ball with a whip? You'd never bring your hand past the club, would you? No. Okay, so a couple more like bigger back swings. I took your club. Okay, so now try and do the same thing with that high-pitched whippy sound. to feel like you finish that way. Left arm's rolled over the right arm. Good, one more time. Do that again. Out in front of you more. Okay, okay again. That one again. Okay, come look. Okay, so set up one more time for me. Okay, just take a back swing and hold it up there. Up there? Yeah. So because we've shortened up your follow through, you're starting to shorten up the backswing a little bit. And so if it's short and you want to hit it hard, you're just going to pull this thing around. Yeah. So it's like, it's a catch 22 there. Yeah. 
So a big backswing, crank it up, and then short follow through. There. Another one. There you go. Might even be easier one more time. Take it back. Let this knee bend inward that way more. It helps keep the weight off the front foot. So if you watch me, when I take it back, see where my knee goes. Yeah. Right? See, my I used to do that, but I was, uh, I, was gonna, I was told to quiet my leg. But that's interesting. Yeah. Why do you, why do you say that? Because you're, you're standing on your front foot at the top of your swing. So you've, you've transferred your weight this way. Yeah, so try not to let your knee point out over the foot. Make it go back behind the ball. There you go. Good. That's better. Straight ball. So let the knee drift in, take the weight off that front foot. There you go. And then the shortest, biggest backswing, shortest finish. Good job. It's trying to get like your chest and your face farther from the ball through the shoulder. 